what's up you guys this is Rob from the gay guy plays and today on the daily grind slash stress to kill we are taking a look at hotfix 22.17.0 which includes yes the new Anaros deluxe skin I bet y'all didn't see that coming did ya neither did I but if you're interested in any Anaros builds definitely take a look at the video that I dropped a little bit earlier this morning I'll leave a link in a card right over there um regardless this has popped up today as well as some other fashion framey things and and, of course, the new Endless Kuva, which we'll talk about in a separate video. However, let's just jump into this right now. So, as you can see, it does cost um, 225 platinum. It includes the Anaros Ramsey skin, the Scarab Cyandana, and the Longsword Kopesh skin. So, let's take a look at how that all plays out. I do have some things that I like, and I do have some things that I don't quite like. But, as you can see... It looks pretty fucking dope overall, right? I mean, we're just looking at the standard stance on this. I have been playing around with some different stances. Um, but as you can see right here, it's actually fairly cool because it's got a couple of different metallics on it. So it has the standard metallic um, on its accent, but everything here is like a brushed metallic. So it's not going to be like in your face, wham, blam, take a look at me, here I am kind of thing. It's going to be a lot more subtle. In fact, a lot of the skin is incredibly subtle. As you can see, for the metallic that we're using, we're using a pretty bright metallic. But even if we get more and more intense, it's all kind of muted. Now, if I'm going to be completely honest with you, as much as I love muted tones, it literally changes up the way that you have to kind of like fashion frame because as you can see here, that is the darkest that we can make this skin because of the um, way that the color kind of like reflects. So as you can see right there, we got a pretty dark tone, but even if we go into the smoke section, the smoke colors, it will not get any darker than that. That's as, that's as dark. I'm, I'm going to click on it. I'm gonna click on it. it. That's as dark as it's gonna get. So because of the fact that it does have this brushed metallic texture to it, um, its highs and lows can only go so far. Now, I know a lot of you guys are gonna be like, isn't that kind of like what you're into, Rob? Yes, it's definitely my aesthetic. However, you know, I believe in the freedom of the people in order to have the ability to make their Warframes look as garish as possible. <laughs> So, this is going to be a little bit of a struggle. It's definitely going to suit my aesthetic. I don't know how it's going to suit everybody else's. I do need to point out something here. If you can take a look at my rose gold, it's not as poppy, it's not as shiny as you normally would have it because of the fact that the metallic is brushed. So it's going to take on a little bit of a different characteristic. I figured that I would go with a bit of a bronze for it, but I do have to say, the skin overall, I'm going to take off the signed on real fast so it doesn't detract from the back so you can see the back in all of its glory take a look at this i love the kind of like layered pieces right there he's got like all of these insane like jet propulsion things that come out all over the place so he's got one in the back of his head he's got two in the arms and for those of you guys who did not like you know the dog nipples the dog nipples are gone however for those of you who are we're into the dog nipples, you know, I'm pressing F to pay respects for you guys because that's not available here. Um, now, overall, I think the skin is super cool. I love these kind of details on the back. Absolutely fantastic. But the number one thing, and I said this before in my Octavia uh, review for the deluxe skins, the number one thing that gets me is the fact that the skins and their collection do not share the same, um, do not share the same textures. And that always, always bugs me. So we're gonna take a look at the Cyan Donna real fast, which I'm gonna give you, I'm, go I'm gonna give them a thumbs up for. Uh, because it is different from their normal, like, jelly Cyan Donna. It's still a little bit jelly, but it's more along the lines of leathery. It's got this kind of dual layered effect, and I think that maybe the whole aesthetic for this is just layer upon layer because we got double layers on the thighs we got double layers on the back we've even got like layering effects here and i think that they've carried that through to the side dot and the sign on it is very um it's still got a little bit of jelly to it but it's mostly leather and i like the fact that they didn't make it completely absurd i wish that these were a little bit shorter but that's just my aesthetic um and tell me that this doesn't kind of remind you of one of wukong's masks right one of his alt helmet masks um but the number one thing I'm going to ding them for is, as you can see here, this is not actually the same color that is on the skin. And the main reason is 
because if I made it the same color that was on the skin, it would not have the same metallic. And that always crushes my soul, um, because as you can see here, that would actually be the color. So if we're taking a look at that right there, those two do not remotely match. And that bugs me big time. I always want a, a collection to be very cohesive. And unfortunately, this is not super cohesive. I'm also going to do something that's probably going to trigger some people. I'm actually going to do copy main colors to show how this kind of like carries over. It doesn't carry over the greatest because of the fact that we have a very, very muted Anaros here. And then we have this kind of like crazy back. The model, fantastic. Model works. Model works. I'm not going to hate on it that badly. Um, but the fact that it does not carry over the textures does bug me a considerable, considerable bit. Oops, that's okay. Well, we'll just leave it at that. We're just going to do that. And then we're going to toss on uh, this color, which is from, it's not from the Corpus. It's from the Eximus. It's right here. It's actually supposed to be this color right here, but uh, it clearly not, not, not the greatest when it comes to continuity. However, let's take a look at the weapon because the weapon is pretty fucking fantastic. Shares the same issues. Shares the same issues as the Cyandana where the textures are not the same. And you know what? They they did a great job writing, um, writing with the Octavia skin. So don't think that the change is not going to end up coming because I had to do go ahead and color this the same way that I colored the other stuff. But look at that Kopesh. That Kopesh looks so freaking dope. Let me do let me do a little bit of this real quick so we can take a better look at it. Look at the fact that you can actually, it's like an open area over here. I'm like, what? I love this whole back end right here. I almost wish that there were some flames coming out of it. Uh, we did take a look at it in the simulacrum a little bit earlier to see if, you know, anything would uh, change all that much when it's channeled. And we didn't see any of that uh, with the deluxe skin. There also wasn't any kind of like alteration in the way that his abilities looked. So definitely um, keep that in mind just in case you guys are wondering whatsoever. But this isn't the only fashion frame that was dropped today. Of course, of course, Best Boy Naja, Best Boy Naja also got a little bit of love. So let's take a look right here at his new Jinza helmet. And let me tell you, that shit looks fucking dope. Oh my god. This whole back area right here, I'm so into it. And y'all know you looking at Neja from behind. See the little cute gluteus maximus. I can see that right there. I'm loving it. It does have clipping issues. I know that a lot of there's some people are not super super into that. Me, I'm not as bothered by it as some people. There's like the whole back horn area. I just love it and I love the way that his face looks and it kind of just matches the whole aesthetic because it's very like ribbony. It's almost kind of like the ribbons on his chest were like twisted up versions of these and I love that kind of continuity throughout. So I'm a big fan of that. Um, definitely check that one out that's in the market and I believe that should be 75 plat the way like all of um, all of the helmets are like 75 plat, right? That's 75 plat? Yep. So we've got that. The other thing that I need to point out for you guys, because it is a limited time, um, is the fact that the Easter palette is available for the next eight days, um, and it's only up for one plat, so you can go ahead and pick that up and add it to your collection. There is also the Lephantis head, uh, Le Lepis, not Lephantis, headgear, which turns you into a little bunny rabbit. Um, it's for 5,000 credits, but do know that they usually take this out of your inventory um, after all of that. Now there are a couple things that I do want to kind of like read off to you guys that are available in the market, um, but let, I figure we'll go ahead and do that kind of like Rob reads you shit that you don't want to have to read for yourself style. So give me one quick second while we swap. So in addition to the fashion frame, we also have the new Endless Kuva Survival, which is available on Tavani and the Kuva Fortress. We've already discussed this in a previous video, so I'll go ahead and leave that as a link up top. I think the only big thing to note here is that they have changed the flow 
to how to make Kuva Guardians vulnerable. And it's really, really easy. It used to be Void Blast to stun, then Void Dash to disarm. But now it's no stun state required. You can blast or dash to disarm. But they did make them a little bit more juicy, a little bit more rotund, a little bit more difficult to kill because now you don't have to kind of go through all of the hullabaloo of stunning then dashing through them. It's just it's just like any one of your abilities right now and then you can go in and start fighting them. Um, in addition, we do have some Ikea frame that has been added. So they have done new Corpus and Grenier Articula, which listen, I'm not so big on on Ikea frame, um, but they are adding new things in just in case you guys want to go ahead and decorate your ship with that. Me, I'm not as big on it, but maybe we'll do a, a ship tour at some point. We also have the new Suk Shuma decorations, um, which are pretty enough. Like, it's not really my style. I I don't know, I like having things that kind of relate more to me. Like, um, you know, like the Articulas, because I get to design them, like little awards. Those Eidolon statues cost a shit ton, by the way, to put into your ship. I had to take out so many trees, it breaks my heart. Um, then, of course, we have the Lepus headgear and the Easter color picker, so make sure you guys get that ASAP. And then I think that's pretty much it. There are some smaller changes that are really, really not all that crazy, like Grenier Commander Switch Teleport. You know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and link, um, the hotfix patch notes in the description box below. But that does about do it for me for now. I'm actually gonna um, dig in a little bit, do a little bit more fashion framing with the Inaros and see what looks I can kind of pull out of him. In addition to that, like I said earlier, I did put out a build video for him, so if you haven't checked that out, I will link that as well. Um, and that about does it for me for now. So as always, love somebody, hurt nobody and wait for the fashion frame video because I'll actually do a full one on Anaros, um, which I need to work on now. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.